My name is Daniel Song, and I'm pleased to present on the BioProtect Balloon. Um, and I'm currently Professor of Disease Size Director of GU Radiotherapy at Johns Hopkins. And disclosures, I don't have a disclosure slide, but I have received research support and funding from BioProtect. So what is BioProtect? It, it is a rectal spacing balloon for patients who are undergoing radiation treatment. And uh, so the uh, balloon is about five centimeters long and approximately space achieved is about 18 millimeters high. It is made of a um, polymer which has already been used in other medical applications. So it has a long history of safety and utility. And um, we think the balloon has several advantages compared to what's available on the market today. So those of you who perform rectal spacing know that there are uh, two other gel products. And compared to those, the balloon provides uh, predictable, reproducible spacing, creates a symmetrical space. And we know from many studies now that symmetrical spacing creates better dosimetry and better radiation treatment plans. Um, it has the possibility of being adjustable and repositionable. So um, while placing the balloon, one can adjust the position, um, which is uh, you know, contrary to the gels where they kind of go where, where they may end up not exactly where you intend to place them. And then finally, um, one unique thing is that it's a blunt dissection. So you don't actually have to put a needle into the rectal, perirectal space. Um, but rather we use a blunt dilator tip and so um, able to get dissection of the perirectal space with less risk of um, entering the rectal wall or entering the prostate. And then finally, even though the balloon is larger, it's actually less material to degrade. So um, it's less than one cc of actual material and the, the center of the balloon is filled with saline as compared to gel spacers where you're actually inserting like 10 cc's of foreign material. So uh, those of us who have performed rectal gel spacers, if you've done enough, then you've probably had a patient like this where you can get rectal entrapezation and um, you, know, you, you think you're in the space, but then you get the post-implant images. And so there have been multiple case reports now we're demonstrating where some of these patients will do fine, be asymptomatic, um, but uh, there are cases where you can see rectal ulceration and then you have to hold off on your radiation, allow that to heal before proceeding with the radiation treatment. So this we think is an advantage to the balloon spacer where you're not gonna get rectal entrapezation. So this is a, a view of the device. Uh, it comes with an 18 gauge needle, a dilator, a sheath, and then a um, deployer device with the balloon curled up at the end of it. And this is a video um, from Dr. Sean Zimberg, who's an early adopter, participated in our multinational trial. Um, patient can be done under local anesthesia or general anesthesia. Uh, you introduce the 18 gauge needle, and then what you'll see here is um, <clears throat> he's um, made a little incision and then introducing the dilator device. Um, and so then once you have the dilator in, you push past the rectal hump enter the perirectal space, and then performing essentially blunt dissection. And all this is done under transrectal ultrasound guidance. So once the dilator is in satisfactorily around to the base of the seminal vesicles, then um, he's attaching the device, which has the balloon at the tip, um, remove the dilator, leave the sheath in place, and then expand with saline. And you maintain visibility of the prostate, and uh, you know the you, you can completely visualize what's happening here. And as you can see, he's also able to position and adjust the position under ultrasound guidance uh, of the balloon, and, and watch as it's being inflated. And then next is uh, view on sagittal again, uh, confirmed positioning. Um, and also can take a measurement. Uh, and this is about 17 cc's of saline that's been inserted. So once that's confirmed and uh, one is happy with the position, then there's a procedure and you'll see on the left side where he's sort of closing off a, a, um, a lock there. 
and then flipping that over. And what that does is it seals the end of the balloon. And so that saline is locked in place. And then you remove the uh, applicator. And the best part is afterwards, what you get is a CT visible balloon spacing. Um, you can see this one's very nicely placed. It is also visible in MRI. It doesn't um, cause any occlusion on the MRI images. But if you're in a clinic where you're not doing MRI routinely as part of your simulation, you're able to see the balloon very clearly without requiring having an MRI, unlike some of the spacer devices. And also, you can see it on the linear accelerator cone beam images. So you, every day, when you're lining up the patient for the treatment, you're able to see the balloon very clearly. So this is a quick overview of our multinational pivotal randomized phase three study. Um, this is an, a manuscript under uh, review, hopefully be published very soon. It was a randomized subject-blinded phase three trial, 222 subjects, two to one balloon to control at 16 sites. And there were two primary endpoints. Um, one was efficacy in terms of reducing the dose of the rectum receiving 70 gray, and then also a safety endpoint for non-inferiority in uh, adverse events. And, and you'll see that that was well exceeded in terms of less events in the patients receiving the balloon. So this is a graph of the dose volume histograms comparing patients before balloon and then after balloon. You can see there were very robust reductions in the rectal V70s, uh, which has been well correlated to risk of toxicity and radiation proctitis. And then this is a comparison of the GI toxicities in the uh, spacer trial, both for BioProtect, as well as the randomized trials for um, Baragel and Space OER. Uh, and what you'll notice is that in the control groups, there were less adverse events um, within the BioProtect trial. And we think this is a function of the uh, Vericeed automated planning, rapid plan that was used. So uh, actually a higher hurdle to overcome in terms of showing reductions in adverse events. But there were significant reductions within the BioProtect balloon group. And this compares favorably to the uh, published data from Baragel as well as Space OER over here. Um, and these are grade one in the space OER comparison, and then grade two in the bear gel comparison. And when you compare the spacing, we think that's a, a function, a reflection of the spacing achieved. The BioProtect gives about 18 millimeters of space, uh, where the other two products will give you more like 12 millimeters of space. So you're going to get a little bit less uh, rectal sparing with the gel products. And uh, the volume is also larger, so not only in the midline, but you get more lateral sparing as well. Um, and then one other comparison, if you look at the, the rate of degradation, uh, there is a slight decrease in the spacing that you get over time. But with BioProtect, it's only a 4% decline at three months, whereas with the gels, it's more like 20 to 30%. And again, this is just showing the absolute reduction in height over the course of the treatment with the BioProtect balloon, it's one millimeter. Uh, with Space OER, it's almost four millimeters. Uh, bear gel, also uh, very low. And, but also a note, at six months post-implant, the bear gel, 98.5% of patients had the balloon completely reabsorbed. Um, and if, for comparison, if you look at bear gel, 57% of the patients um, mean volume reduction at 12 months, but they're, you know, 47% uh, still volume present after 12 months. So in summary, the BioProtect balloon achieves re robust reductions in the radiation dose. In our pivotal trial, there was 98% uh, of patients achieving more than a 25% reduction in the rectal V70, and that translated into an over 11% absolute reduction in IMRT-related adverse events. Um, the advantages of it compared to the other products are adjustable position, no risk of entravization into the rectal wall, minimal spacing change during the course of radiation, um, but yet very good resolution and degradation by six months. Um, and it's easily visible on CT alone, so we feel that this compares favorably with other spacers in terms of patient tolerance, adverse events, and consistent rectal dose reductions. Thank you for your attention. Wait a minute, stay up here. Thanks, thanks, Dan. 
this is sort of like a silly millimeter or two counts here, but the difference, it's, uh, I, so I do a lot of uh, cryotherapy and other transrectal treatments for uh, focal therapy, HIFU, whatever. What's the, so if I'm, if I'm using the, the transrectal ultrasound, but I'm using transperineal probes for cryotherapy, is, is there going to be any issue with my visualization? That, and then obviously in HIFU, I'd think there'd be a problem, but what's, what's your uh, comment here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, from the perspective of someone who doesn't perform those procedures, I mean, I do break therapy, but um, I do think there is potential utility for any transperineal approach. Um, I don't know if, if the balloon would be affected by, you know, the energy from the HIFU or cryotherapy. Well, I, but, do, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Yeah. But what, but what about, is that, you have any data with ultrasound, you know, you know the, the same day or later, transrectal ultrasound, the impact of that, having that spacer there? Are you still able to visualize the mm -hmm. prostate? Yes, yeah, so you, you can still visualize the prostate. Yeah, that's, that's one of the advantages compared to like space so we are, once you inject it, you've got a bunch of bubbles in there with the gel and you're not gonna be able to see anymore. Right, well, yeah, so with space R and bear gel, you see that, but it's not, I don't think it's so much with bear gel, but if you wait a few days, that, then that's not too much of an issue. Okay, great.